Hey, everybody. Welcome again to another episode of Real Estate Investing Mastery Podcast. This is our Brilliant at the Basics series. I'm Joe McCall. I'm with Peter Vexelman. Peter, how are you? I'm great. Thanks, Joe. Awesome. Listen, the last two episodes that we just recorded that you've recently listened to, we've talked about what Peter were to do if he were to start all over and what I would do if I was to start all over. So go check those out. This podcast series is sponsored. We have a sponsor. It's sponsored by our book, freebasicbook.com. Freebasicbook.com. It's called Brilliant at the Basics. Um, you know, this is a real simple book. It's not some big, voluminous, epic uh, book about like the million different ways you can make money in real estate. It's just about keeping things simple and basic, foundational, and that's how we've had success in our business. I was just in Atlanta a couple weeks ago with Peter, and uh, there's nothing complicated about his business. He's got a bunch of people running around doing deals. He's doing literally about a deal a day if you average it out over the, over the month, and it's just crazy. But you look at the numbers, and you look how he's doing the deals. He's doing the same thing everybody else does. He's just taking it up to another level. He's doing more of it. He's more consistent with it. So on this episode, one of the things that was a common thread in what Peter and I were talking about in the last two episodes was finding the cash buyers. You got to where, where you got to find out where the money is. And so we're going to talk in this episode briefly about our favorite ways to find cash buyers. I'm going to mention my three, and Peter's going to talk about his three favorite ways to find cash buyers. And this is really simple. You don't have to complicate it. You don't have to spend a ton of money on marketing and websites and business cards and you know it's really really simple so um, Peter why don't I why don't you take the first three and then I'll take the second three how about that absolutely you know what I like about my three which are probably better than your three right, is that mine are not one and done meaning there's some things out there that you do you do it one time you extract whatever you can and you're done the, 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 what we utilize to build our cash buyers databases was are things we could do literally on an ongoing basis. And we do do them on an ongoing basis. And every couple of weeks when you do this, it's going to yield more and more results. So one of our favorites, because it's the biggest thing out there, are just basically search engines like Google. So what you do is this, couple step process. Number one, sit down and come up with as many terms that have anything to do with either real estate investing or real estate investors that you can. So these are terms like, you know, find real estate investors, you know, real estate cash buyers, invest in REOs, buy commercial real estate, you know, buy storage units, uh, you know, invest in apartment buildings. So literally what you're doing is you're just brainstorming. You're coming up with about 30 to 50 terms. Again, you know, anything to do with either investing or investors. Then you go to search engines like Google and you start Googling these terms. Now, here's the key. On the end of every term, you want to put the name of the city that you live in. Obviously, I'm in Atlanta, so for me, I would be like, you know, find real estate investors, Atlanta, Georgia. You know, we buy houses, Atlanta, Georgia. Invest in real estate, Atlanta, Georgia. And then all, it, by, and by doing that, the, the city, what it does is it grounds a Google around you. Because, you know, obviously, you want to build a database of, of, of local people first. And it grounds it. Now, not I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Not every result you're going to see is going to be an investor. You know, you're going to see mortgage companies. You're going to see real estate agents. You know, for this exercise, you keep those out. You just focus on either investing or investors. So that's how we utilize Google. Craigslist. I mean, Craigslist literally could be used on an ongoing date. You don't have to even wait weeks to do it. You could do it every single day. You're going to your city, go to real estate for sale. You're going to the drop down for sale by owner. And then in the search bar, you're using, again, the key terms like investor or motivated seller or investment properties or fixer upper, right in the search term of, of Craigslist. And what you're going to see is all the ads of uh, people that are selling, obviously, selling their investment properties are going to come up. Well, we can make an assumption. If someone is selling an investment property, they got to be an investor, right? I mean, because who else even owns investment properties to sell other than investors? So all of those automatically become candidates. Uh, local RIA clubs. I mean, I don't care what part of the country you're in. There's probably a RIA club or real estate investment organization within 50 or 60 miles of you. In, in most areas, it's a lot closer. Here in Atlanta, we, we got uh, a dozen or so of them all over the place. So what you're doing, just Google for some local uh, RIA clubs. And for those of you that don't know, 
They're just organizations. Almost every city and town has some. They're run by investors for investors. And really, there's two purposes behind them, a networking purpose and an educational purpose. So get a hold of your local RIA clubs, even, a, even their subgroups, and find out when and where they meet. I think all of us need to have them in our calendars. I know it's impossible to, to, to go to all of them, but whenever you can and you're available, look at, the, look at your calendar and pop in over there. And the reality is, even if you're only there for five or ten minutes for the networking piece, but it's a great place to shake some hands, meet some people, grab some business cards, add them to your database, those those are all investors. Again, they're ongoing. You're getting new investors there all the time. Um, so those, those three sources, we love them. We use them on an ongoing basis. What, what you got, Joe? Well, you know, it's interesting. You just talked about RIA clubs. It reminded me of a friend of mine. He's a good friend of mine, so I can make fun of him. <laughs> but here in St. Louis, um, I met the guy and I thought, yeah, he doesn't look like an investor. I mean, like, come on. You know, do you, I didn't, I was wondering, like, he, okay, he's very ambitious. Uh, he's hungry. But are people going to take him seriously? <laughs> I feel bad for even saying that. But I, I, are people even going to take him seriously? Come on now. But what did he start doing? He started going to every real estate investment club in the St. Louis area and just started networking with people. He's a very sociable guy, you know, and, and pretty soon he's getting other people to bring him deals. He's getting other people to sell his deals. And he's just a master networker, right? And so there's a lot of power and truth into what you said. Uh, all right, so um, related to what you were talking about, going to Craigslist, you were mentioning going into for sale by owners. I like to go to the landlords as well and find the people that are advertising rental properties. And you can find the ones that um, in, the, in the neighborhoods that you're wanting to focus on. But find the landlords who are advertising rental properties and just call them up. Say, hey, are you looking for more deals? Are you in the market to buy more properties? I've got some just like this with some really good numbers. All right, and just talk to them. And make it conversational. Listen, if you're a beginning rookie too, don't be afraid to say that. You don't have to be, you know, pretend to be that you're some giant rock star. Just say, hey, you know what? I'm getting, I'm new in the business here. I'm just starting to to, to make some phone calls and meet some other investors. Um, I find deals, you know, like this. Are you looking for more properties? Are you in the market to buy more deals? And uh, you'll make some great contacts with landlords. The other thing you can do in relation to that is drive around looking in the neighborhoods that you're targeting and find the rental signs in the yard and call those landlords up, call those property managers. That was number one. Number two, I love bandit signs for finding buyers. I don't like them much for finding sellers, but for finding buyers, they're fantastic. So if you've got an area where you get a lot of properties or you know it's a hot area, one of the things I recommend, and, and I have this on a previous uh, Brilliant at the Basics series, I show you where to find the best zip codes. You go into list source and you can download all of the last investor, uh, all the last transactions and, and sort them from high to low and see the top zip codes where most of the activity is. Drive those zip codes, okay, because there's a lot of investors out there buying properties and put out some signs, something real simple like um, uh, $20,000 foreclosure, all cash as is, call now, okay, or you know, if you don't want to really, if you don't want to advertise a deal, you could say something along the lines of, I have, uh, if you have cash, I have deals. Call this number, okay? You're putting signs out there looking for investors. Um, and the other thing I'll say in relation to signs is, um, if you have a property under contract, you've always, always put signs out in the neighborhood advertising that specific house because you're going to get buyers from that. And a lot of times, you'll find local buyers that live in the neighborhood that aren't maybe investors, but they're wanting to buy a home for their family member or they're wanting to invest in some property close to where they live. And then finally, one of the best ways to find cash buyers once you have a property under contract is by sending, I call them motivated seller letters to the nearby investors who bought properties in that zip code in the last few months. So it's a you have a property at 123 Main Street in, in this certain zip code, and you have it under contract, you've got a month to find a buyer. One of the first things you should do is write this, handwrite this motivated letter that says, hey, help, I own this property at 123 Main Street, and I've got to sell it now. 
Okay, you if if it was listed with the realtor, you could say, I've had it listed with the realtor and I've had zero interest. The taxes are paid, the title is clear, and I need this thing sold today. Underline it. So you're 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 writing this letter as if you're a desperate, motivated seller, and you are because you got to sell this thing, right? Call me right now. Drive by it. Call me. I've got to get this thing sold today. And underline it and then handwrite it and send that to every investor. In fact, the guy I learned this from, what he does, he told me this, he takes the letter and he actually crumples it up and then folds it, open it, and then folds it back and puts it in a hand-addressed envelope with a live stamp and mails it. I'm not kidding. Every time I've done that, I've gotten a 20 to 30% response rate. Many times, 30 to 40, about a 30% response rate on those letters, which is just phenomenal. And you're sending that letter out. And if anything, they may not be interested in that property, but you get them on the phone and you talk to them and find out what they are interested in. So those are the, the six things. Just to summarize, I wrote them down. Google, go to Craigslist, look up the for sale by owners that investors are advertising and the landlords. Go to RIA clubs, um, bandit signs, advertising for buyers, and sending out these motivated seller letters to recent cash buyers. I'm telling you guys, if you do that, finding buyers is not going to be an issue. And I will say this finally to, to end this. Never stop doing that. It's really, really important. You always start mark. You always are keep on marketing for buyers. Wouldn't you agree to that, Peter? No, absolutely. This is one thing you can't have enough of. I mean, to this day, there's not an, a day that doesn't go by that here in my office, I don't get, and this is just from the last two days, these get put on my desk by uh, new investors that come into our world and we process them. So no matter what, I don't care if you're doing, if you're doing your first deal or if you're doing your, you know, over thousands of deals, th th this, is, this is the goose that lays the golden egg. Absolutely critical. I will say this too, if you have a team, if you have a, if you're starting to grow your business and you have an acquisitions team, this is one of the last things that you need to outsource or give to somebody else. You need to have these relationships with these buyers yourself because they're the ones who have the money. And you need to get to know them. You need to take them out for coffee, have them over into your office. Those cash buyers are really, really critical and important relationships you need to nurture because these are guys that are going, these are, again, these are guys that have the money who are going to buy your deals. Very good. Well, I like this episode. It was one of my favorites. <laughs> Listen, guys, go to freebasicbook.com to get our book, Brilliant at the Basics. Freebasicbook.com. It's free. We just ask you to pay shipping and handling. We'll get it out to you. And uh, it takes about a week or two to get the actual book, but you can get a PDF version of the book right away. You also get the videos that Peter and I did to, to that w w where we made the book from. And we also have an extra book that I give away in that called um, Flipping Houses While on Vacation. It's a really cool book uh, that you're going to get a lot out of. The reason why Peter and I are doing this, guys, is we want to grow and expand our business. We want to duplicate our business model in markets all over the country. And if you want more information on how to work with us one-on-one, -on -one, personally work with us, have our team build your systems for you, have our virtual assistants do your marketing for you, and do all your follow-up for you, there's nothing else out like this out there. Go to peterandjoe.com, peterandjoe.com to get more information and apply. We don't work with everybody. All right? So thanks, Peter. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Thanks, Joe. See you guys. Bye-bye.